morning, everyone, and a very happy Easter to you all. My name is Carol Hickman, and as the chairperson of the Church Council, I'm happy to welcome you to Millwood United Church, a spiritual community where you can explore your purpose and place. Today, on this Easter morning, some of us are here in person, while others join us live on Facebook. I begin by acknowledging the land. This building is on the traditional land of Treaty 6 First Nations. And wherever you find yourself this morning, I hope you can take a moment to give thanks for the people who have lived on it and cared for it for over thousands of years. We are all treaty people for which we give thanks. Millwoods United is also an affirming congregation. This means we work to support one another regardless of what we believe, regardless of whom we love, and regardless of our sexual orientation, gender identity, and cultural background. Each Sunday, we gather to remember our sacred values, to discuss how we can live as followers of Jesus, and to express our hopes and dreams. Friends, every day at this church, people join in, reach out, and make a difference. I begin with a few announcements about this work. After the service at 12 noon, we are invited to a virtual coffee hour on Zoom. You can find the link for this on the homepage of the church website and in Thursday's What's the Buzz. I hope to see many of you there. Today, we give thanks for the work of Don and Lil Grabinski. This morning, they delivered about 150 bag lunches, which the inner city pastoral ministry team will distribute today at the Bissell Center. Thank you to the Grabinskis and to all who supported them financially in this big effort. And if you have something you would like mentioned next Sunday, please send the office an email. And now, I welcome Ian, who would lead us in worship. Thank you, Carol, and happy Easter to everyone. The season of Lent in which we symbolically traveled with Jesus to Jerusalem is over, and we've arrived at the mystery of an empty tomb. We've come to celebrate springtime, new life, and the risen Christ who lives within us. This is Easter Sunday, and so today we join with fellow pilgrims here and all around the world to sing hallelujah. Last year, our Easter celebration was an exclusively virtual run. There were only three of us in the sanctuary for a service we live streamed on Facebook. And if you'd suggested then that one year later we would still be using Facebook Live to reach most of the congregation, few would have believed you. This morning there are many more than three people here, but we continue to follow public health restrictions and we continue to hope and pray that the pandemic will end soon. But it is wonderful to see probably more than 20 people here. I, this might be the biggest group I've been in with in 13 months. It's lovely. Um, you know, the advent of vaccines late last year and the reality that more than 15% of Canadian adults have now received at least one dose of a vaccine, well, this gives a lot of substance to our hope. But until the threat of the virus is gone in Alberta, we will continue to follow Health restrictions is our small part of a larger effort. Two days ago, at our Good Friday gathering on Zoom, I suggested that this long weekend might feel like an extended Holy Saturday in which we're suspended between the fear and death of Good Friday and the promise of Easter Sunday and new life. But resurrection and new life mean much more than the elimination of a dangerous virus. And so we affirm that despite life's difficulties, another holy Saturday has come and gone, and Easter is here. Christ is risen, risen indeed. I pray that our time of song, story, and ritual will fill our hearts and minds with an awareness of how Easter unites us through the power of the risen Christ. And now, as always, we light the Christ candle to begin. This morning, Carol will help with this as we sing a refrain of an Easter hymn. Oh 
Friends, may the light of our candle symbolize the presence of the risen Christ within us on this blessed Easter morning as at any moment. And I now offer us a gathering prayer. Friends, please pray with me. Holy One, on this morning filled with news of empty tombs and in this festival of resurrection, we celebrate amid many challenges. And yet the Christ candle shines and so we say hallelujah. This morning amid signs of new life, may our hearts and minds be turned to mystery, our eyes be filled with the radiance of love, and our voices be tuned to joy. This morning, some of us may have hearts made heavy by loss. Some of us may be afraid in the face of life's challenges. But regardless of our feelings, Easter's new life is available to us. May we know this Easter hope and respond to it from the very heart of our being. And we offer these words of prayer through the strong name of our friend and companion, Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. And now we sing an opening hymn. It is for more voices, number 121. Hey now, singing hallelujah. So friends, we've now come to the segment we call This Is Us, and this morning we're going to show a short video about the mission of the United Church of Canada. What 
the world needs now is to be vaccinated. And some laughter would be a good thing too. Our world needs more patience to endure this long night of the soul pandemic. Our world needs healing, reconciliation, and hope. Our world needs more non-white people asking that question. Our world needs resolve so that people and planet can flourish. Our world needs systems to dismantle racism, not just by words, but by actions. Our world needs radical redistribution of resources so there is enough for all. Our world needs followers of Jesus working with him to make a difference. Our world needs mission and service. Please, gift through mission and service this Easter season. The world needs us to be church, together. And now, friends, before we hear the story of the first Easter morning, we're going to spend some time for prayer in action. Wooden cross stands beside the communion table. And when Bruce and I brought it into the sanctuary on Tuesday, we decorated it with a black cloth and took a photo of it, which we used in the Good Friday Zoom worship. But now it stands empty as a symbol of Christ's empty tomb. In a minute, we will decorate the cross with flowers, and thank you, Kathy Bailey, for purchasing them. We're going to use the flowers to transform the cross from a symbol of pain and death into one of color and hope, and to represent any prayers that we've brought with us this Easter Sunday. We're going to sing a hymn about spring in a minute, too, but before that, I'm going to invite us into a time of silent prayer. We may want to pray for a new and better world after the end of the pandemic, for the healing of those who are sick with COVID-19 or other ailments, for peace in a world that still has too much violence. Our prayers can be anything we've brought today on our hearts and minds. And once we've had time to make a silent prayer and after we've started to sing, as comes the breath of spring, Each of you are invited to come to the cross uh, to place a flower, which you'll see. Pick up a flower that's on the communion table and to place your flower in one of the holes on the cross. And please remember to maintain physical distance from those not in your cohort. Those of us at home are also invited to find a prayer within your heart this morning and to participate virtually in this process. Through this ritual, we hope to weave all of our separate prayers into a beautiful mosaic. So let us now take a few seconds in silence in order to find a prayer we would like to be represented on our cross. Friends, please pray. Amen. And now as the musicians start singing, as comes the breath of spring from Voices United 373, others of us are invited to come and place a flower on the cross.
Thank you so much for everyone who participated in that ritual, both here and at home. And now Carol will read today's gospel passage. Carol. Let us pray. May our hearts and minds be open so that as we listen to a passage of ancient scripture, we might find wisdom for our living today. Today's gospel reading is the final chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Mark 16, the empty tomb. When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought perfumed oils that they could anoint Jesus. Very early, just after sunrise on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But when they arrived at the grave site, they found that the huge stone had already been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young person sitting at the right, dressed in a white robe. They were very frightened, but the youth reassured them, do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Now go tell the disciples, Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee, where you will see him just as he told you. But the women fled the tomb, bewildered and trembling, and they said nothing to anyone because they were so afraid. Friends, on Thursday evening, Kim and I drove downtown to enjoy one of the Edmonton Spark installations. Perhaps you've seen photos of them. One called Fantastic Planet is a group of huge inflatable figures in Churchill Square. Another involves three large sculptures of chickadees on the roof of Colab Art Space in the Quarters neighborhood. For those who have not yet experienced Spark in person, I recommend it. On Thursday, Kim and I parked on 105th Street in front of First Presbyterian and walked to an art installation at Beaver Hills House Park, just north of Jasper Avenue. The photo projected behind me shows some of it, called Wapos, which is Creek for Rabbit. It involves 40 illuminated animals, nature sounds, and a self-guided storyline. Given this was the evening when the church marks the Last Supper, Given that Wapos involves rabbits, which were associated with spring and Easter, and given that it was a guided walk in the downtown core, it reminded me of the Way of the Crosswalk, which Christian social activists like Bob McEwen have organized downtown on Good Friday for the past 40 years. Except Wapos is a journey from sadness to joy. So it seemed to encompass not just Good Friday, but all of Holy Week, including the new life of Easter. I was enchanted by Wapos, and I was fascinated simply by being downtown. We arrived about 20 minutes before our 9.30 p.m. ticket, and so we went for a walk along Jasper. I was taken aback by how many cars and pedestrians were out and how many bars and restaurants were open and busy. If it weren't for all the face masks, I might have imagined the pandemic was over. A year ago this month, Kim and I went for a walk on Jasper with my sister Catherine, who lives in Oliver, and on that day, the street reminded me of a post-apocalyptic movie. It was in the throes of construction, and the only people we passed seemed to be homeless. So last Thursday's walk contained another hint of Easter. Edmonton is itching for the end of the pandemic, and when it does end, the city may quickly burst back into activity, commerce, and community. Except the pandemic isn't over yet. Only 15% of Canadian adults have received a vaccine shot, and 
case numbers and hospitalization rates are increasing, at least outside of Atlantic Canada, where, like much of East Asia and the South Pacific, COVID-19 was eliminated last spring. Most of the six non-Atlantic provinces have recently tightened restrictions and with new cases at more than 1,000 per day in Alberta. I imagine more restrictions are coming here too. On this second Sunday of the pan, East, second Easter of the pandemic, most of us are feeling both tired and hopeful. The next few months might be difficult, but I'm confident the pandemic will end. When it does, I wonder how economic and social life will be changed. Two different approaches to Easter could help us to reflect on this question. In one approach, Easter celebrates a new life that is pretty much like the one from before. In a second approach, Easter celebrates a new life that is largely unrecognizable to the one experienced before Easter. Every year, the revised common lectionary, which most Catholic and Protestant churches use to choose Sunday readings, it recommends that on Easter Sunday, the account of the empty tomb from the Gospel of John be read, the one in which Mary mistakes the risen Christ for a gardener. The lectionary offers alternative readings. In one year, the Easter story from Matthew, and the next, the one from Luke, and in a third year, the one from Mark. But I often ignore the lectionary, and during the eight Easter's at which I presided at Millwoods United, I've usually chosen Mark's account, which is the one Carol read for us this morning. I prefer Mark, not just because his story is the earliest one, but because it includes no physical appearances of the risen Christ. This lack reminds me that resurrection is not about a continuation of life as it was before death. It's about a radical transformation. Mark's story highlights that life with the risen Christ is not what our egos want, but what our souls need. Life in Christ is a move closer into the heart of love we call God, a move that flows from the death of illusions. After the wrenching losses of the COVID-19 pandemic, including the deaths of 2,000 people in Alberta, 23,000 in Canada, and 3 million across the world. A lot of things will undoubtedly change. I imagine that many families and social institutions will refine their priorities and have a renewed appreciation of the importance of community. I hope that some of the social inequities revealed by the pandemic poor living conditions of seniors in care homes and of migrant farm laborers, inadequate health care resources, and the exploitation of frontline workers who are often racialized minorities, that these might receive greater attention and care. And I'd be delighted if a post-pandemic world saw changes in the economy that might slow the onset of climate disaster. Unfortunately, I find it easy to imagine that Edmonton and the rest of the world will slip back into life much as it was before the pandemic and not learn too much from the experience. Who knows? What I do know is that every moment of loss or death provides not just pain, but also opportunity for transformation. Whenever we encounter an empty tomb on the other side of grief, we're at a fork in the road. Will we feel this emptiness with our old preoccupations? Or with grace, will the spirit of universal love flow into us? The ending of Mark's gospel presents us with an empty tomb, a proclamation of resurrection by a young man dressed in white, and a group of terrified disciples who flee and tell no one. Their loss has been so great and their grief so big they cannot speak or act. But after this shocking end, I imagine them regrouping and supporting one another. And as they do so, 
I also imagine them realizing that while their dreams of a new tribal god and king died on the cross with Jesus, the divine Christ is flickering to life within the empty tombs of their grief-stricken hearts. It's at this point that I also imagine them turning to one another and speaking for the first time the quiet but joyous words that have been shared by pilgrims on the way of the cross every Easter since. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Amen. Friends, I'm very glad to say that Brian Lagore will now offer a musical offering for us. He's going to sing some hallelujahs that maybe don't necessarily quite fit with everybody's conception of Easter, but I think they fit great. So, Brian, thank you. I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord But you don't really care for music, do ya? It goes like this The fourth, the fifth The minor fall and the major lift The baffled king composing Thank you so much, Brian. You know, when I think back to Easter 2020, it was just Brian Legro, Brian Sampson, and myself at the sanctuary, and Kathy had come early in the morning to bring flowers so we, the three of us could decorate the cross. But I'm just so blessed to have had Brian and Brian and then Len and the musicians and the support of the community. I mean, I don't know how we would have it would have been so much more difficult to get through this now more than 12 months of the pandemic, but uh, 
with this crew, it's been a delight too. So thank you. And now as a hymn of response, the musicians will sing from Voices United 359, He Came Singing Love. Friends, you know that during the pandemic, we haven't been passing offering plates. Instead, there's a couple a placed at the entrance to the sanctuary. And there's also lots of information about how we can give at millwoodsunited.org. Just look for the How to Give link, which is on every page of the church website. It has information about different ways we can support the church. And now having done first one Easter and now a second Easter during the pandemic, we're so grateful for all the ongoing support in so many different ways from so many members of this community. Thank you. And a brief prayer. Spirit of love, may our gifts become more threads in a tapestry that weaves all people of the earth into one great family of love. Amen. And we now take a minute to share joys and concerns and thank yous. And I start this morning with sad news. Yesterday, our friend Reg Martin, husband of our former office administrator, Janice, died. Many of us knew he was living with disease, but I always find it a shock to get such news. So we extend our hearts and compassion and solidarity to Janice, their two children, the entire family, and to all the many people who knew and loved Reg. And does anyone here have a joy, a concern, or a thank you you'd like to let the community know about today? Wendy. Who's that? Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Her name is Marina because she was diagnosed with a very bad cancer. Um, she's an elderly lady. She lives here every day just because of the cancer she's going through. Her life is so generous. She's loving and she's kind. And I just so appreciate her. And I'm just hoping that she will put Marina in her prayers. Thank you for sharing that tough news. That was Wendy McNutt telling us that one of her neighbors has been diagnosed with cancer, and so we, we pray for her situation. We've got Rob.
Wonderful. <laughs> well, friends, that was happy news from Rob McPhee, a 47th wedding anniversary for him and Jennifer coming up this week, and also news that um, someone, a grandson, yeah, Kinley, got uh, accepted to the U of A for the fall, so and it's probably going to be in person, which is delightful to think about. <laughs> That's what they're planning. If you have um, a joy or a concern or somebody you'd like to thank for next Sunday, just uh, let me know. And seeing no more hands, I now invite us into a time of deeper prayer. Friends, please pray with me. God of grace and God of love, today we give thanks for the good news of Easter morning Jesus has been raised, and new life in Christ is here for all of us. We give thanks for friends, neighbors, and fellow pilgrims. Together we've traveled to Jerusalem and the cross, and now we move beyond it to new life and a ministry of love. We give thanks for this community of belonging, a place of nurture, and one in which to carry out a mission of justice and love in the neighborhood and through the world. God of Easter faith, it may seem like we have many reasons to feel fear. The persistence of the pandemic, the sickness and death that accompanies it, inequities that exacerbate the crisis and make it difficult to overcome. In the face of our fears, whatever they are, we pray that we may find a path to trust. In the transformation of the grief of Good Friday into the joy of Easter, may we know in our bones that new life is here for us. In these transformations of Easter, may we find a place beyond doubts and fears, a place where trust is unshakable and in which healing abounds. God of Easter hope, today we pray for all who suffer, for the lonely, for those who live with domestic strife, for those without adequate work or health care or food. We pray for all of us who wait for vaccination. May we work with others to bring the basics of, of life to everyone, to oppose war between nations and within nations. And may the light that we see today shining out of an empty tomb guide us into the future. God, who is love. In the stories of Jesus of Nazareth, we meet love incarnate. They show us paths to healing and new life. They model for us how to live with love, how to die for love, and how to rise with, with love to new life. For the assurance that love is our source, calling, and destiny, we offer deep thanks and praise. God of healing, this morning some of us are hurting. May we know your presence during times of pain when we are grieving, when we feel alone. And we will now take a moment in silence in which to remember others in prayer. Gracious God, these are our concerns and joys which we lift to you. Let us now bring all of our prayers into one as we sing together the prayer that Jesus taught us, singing.
like to remind us that uh, please join together on Zoom at 12 noon and we'll have a virtual coffee hour and share with our friends. So to close our time of worship, we will now sing from Voices United 158, Christ is Alive. Just a brief note about this hymn. Uh, it was written, was it Brian Wren wrote the words to this in 1968 uh, after the uh, execution, the murder of Martin Luther King Jr. That was 53 years ago today, and it, he wrote it for Easter 1968, which was sometime later in April that year. So anyway, it's a joyous hymn of Easter, Christ is Alive, 158. Dear friends, we are an Easter people. And so having sung hallelujah, we leave this place knowing that we do so with the love of God, the grace of the risen Christ within us, and the communion of the Holy Spirit both now and always. Amen. <laughs>